Wet lab training, being prepared to handle complications during cataract surgery. The authors have no financial interest to disclose. How have we all learned surgeries? We learn from reading the steps and principles of surgeries. We watch videos of different surgeons, their approaches and techniques. We observe how a surgeon handles their instrument and the maneuvers. We practice suturing and making a rexus and getting a feel on the simulator in the wet lab. And only then we are ready to operate on the patients. While we hope to always have uneventful surgeries, complications are inevitable. What happens when you face your first complication? Your mind goes into denial. Nope, that cannot be a PC tear. That's just the viscoelastic. But wait, that feels like vitreous. Oops, I should not have withdrawn my handpiece. Now things are gonna get worse. How do I take in my vitrectomy probe? The pupil is getting smaller. Will I be able to place an IOL? But at the end of it, one learns and more importantly, never forgets. Learning from experience is commonly acknowledged as the best way to learn. But we compromise on patient safety, visual outcome, surgical time and surgeon's confidence. So, how do we prepare ourselves to face complications and possibly prevent them from occurring or getting worse? For instance, the flight industry is acknowledged to have one of the lowest error rates. Pilots are trained using simulators that challenge them to land or take off in heavy rain, snowfall and poor visibility and hence mentally prepare them for any situation. With healthcare also, such training cannot be at the cost of human lives. Certainly, we wouldn't want to be one such patient. Yet, Learning by doing is definitely the best option. In this video, we demonstrate low-cost solutions in the wet lab to understand and practice management of common complications. The principles of vitrectomy are better remembered and practiced in the wet lab. Here we are going to demonstrate vitrectomy in a goat's eye. A rexus is being made and cortex wash is done partially. A tear in the posterior capsule is created and the vitreous disturbed. In the presence of a posterior capsular tear, always retain the handpiece inside the eye. Reduce the bottle height and inject viscoelastic through the side port before removing the handpiece. One could also practice staining of the vitreous in the wet lab. Triamcinolone acetate is first injected into the anterior chamber and then washed with balanced salt solution. Viscoelastic is then injected into the anterior chamber. Now the vitreous is well identified as it is stained white. The vitrectomy parameters are first set at cut IA mode with the vitrectomy at a maximum of 2500 cuts per minute. Vitrectomy is then done with the irrigation being held stationary near the side port away from the site of the PC tear. After clearing the vitreous in the anterior chamber, the residual cortex can be removed in the IA cut mode, a useful parameter that many surgeons are unaware of. Note that the vacuum has been increased to 500 and the cutting rate lower to 800. The cortex is sucked and brought above the pupillary plane before being aspirated. In the presence of large PC tears, sulcus placement of IOLs is preferable and ideally this should be done with a 3-piece IOL. If you do not use a 3-piece IOL routinely, it would be wise to practice loading one in the wet lab and understand the maneuvers to inject it into the sulcus while rotating the injector. It is also very essential to practice making a self-sealing sclerocorneal tunnel in a goat's eye so as to convert in the event of a complication.
This is an enucleated human eye after removal of the cornea. A dialysis is being created by tugging on the lens. Rexis is made and the nucleus is then being wheeled out using a bimanual technique to prevent further stress on the zonules. In the presence of a small zonular dialysis, it is sufficient to place an IOL in the bag. Notice how the IOL needs to be placed with the haptics along the region of the dialysis. If the haptics are positioned away from the site of the dialysis, it again becomes a potential site for vitreous prolapse. To tackle larger dialysis, one has to know how to implant a capsular tension ring, keeping in mind the importance of an intact rexus. The CTR needs to be implanted along the areas of strong zonules first and then a dialing hook is used to guide the trailing eyelet into the bag. All of these adverse events most often happen in eyes with a small pupil or a small rexus. Tackling these two early can minimize complications. Iris hooks have been an efficient solution for a small pupil. The fear of using them for the first time in the OR can be overcome by getting a feel of them in the wet lab. A small capsulorexis in a goat's eye can be enlarged by placing a nick with vanner scissors. Use a cystotome or forceps to complete the double rexus. In the event of a runaway rexus, a capsule forceps can be used to rip it back to the center. While it is not possible to train for every adverse eventuality, this process of learning to deal with common complications gives familiarity, dexterity and confidence in all the instrumentation and techniques that will need to be deployed in managing complications.